Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and this is AP Physics Essentials video 46. It's on calculating the electric force. In physics, we'll deal with problems like this, where we've got a normal force, tension, and friction. But what you have to understand is that if we zoom in, we'll see that these are all atoms, and they're interatomic forces, and then forces between these objects, and they're almost hovering on top of each other. So to understand what's really going on at this level, you have to understand how these charges are interacting, or these electric forces are interacting. And so if you ever have two charges that are close to one another, we're going to have an electric force between the two. Now those electric forces can be attractive if the charges are opposite in charge, uh, or they could be repulsive if they both have the same charge. But the formula is just Coulomb's law to calculate how big that electric force is going to be. Now if you look at that equation, it's going to look very similar to Newton's law of universal gravitation. They both have a constant. K is Coulomb's constant, where we had a gravitation constant. Instead of multiplying the masses, times each other, we're multiplying the charges, but we're also, it's an inverse square law where we're taking the distance between the two and then we're squaring that value. And so to calculate the electric force, all you need to know are the constant, which you should memorize as quickly as you can, the two charges, we're going to multiply those times each other, and then we're going to divide that by the square of the distance between the two. And so um, in physics one, you should be able to calculate the electric force between just two charges, and then as you move on to physics two, you should be able to calculate more more charges kind of piled on top of each other. And so here's Coulomb's law again. If we have two charges that are equal in nature, um, that's going to be a repulsive force, but the force is going to be the same on both of those. And then if they're opposite, then it's going to be an attractive force. And here's our equation. It's going to be the same on both charges. And so it's Coulomb's constant, which is 9.0 times 10 to the ninth. And so that's easy to remember as just 9e9 um, newtons times meter squared divided by Coulomb squared. So that's a constant you should simply memorize. Then we're going to multiply our two charges. In this case, it'd be q times q. And then we're going to divide that by the square of the distances between the two, how far the, the charges are separated. And so let me give you an example of a problem. Let's say we want to calculate the electric force between two charges that each have a 2.0 microcoulomb charge. What's a micro? That's 10 times, uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 6th. You also might see nanocoulombs. That's 1 times 10 to the negative 9th. Coulombs are a really large charge. And let's say they're separated by 4.0 centimeters. Now you're going to have to calculate that to meters. And so let me show you how I would solve this problem. I know Coulomb's constant. That's 9 times 10 to the 9th. Now I know my two charges, which are going to be 2.0 times 10 to the negative 6th coulombs. And then I'm going to get my distance, which is going to be 4.0 times 10 to the negative 2nd meters. Again, I have to convert that to meters. So I'm going to solve Solve it like this. I've got Coulomb's constant here. Here are my two charges on the top. Since they're both positive, I don't have to do anything with it. But again, it's going to be the absolute value of those two charges. And then I'm going to take the distance between the, between the two, and I'm going to square that value. That's a common mistake, that you will not square that value, and it's going to screw up your answer. So let me kind of simplify a little bit. So I've multiplied everything across the top, and I get 3.6 times 10 to the negative 2 newtons. Now what happened to all my other units? We had meters squared on the top and meter squared on the bottom, so those cancel. And then we had Coulomb squared on the top, uh, or rather on the bottom, and Coulomb squared on the top, so those are going to cancel. So I've got a force now. I've got a Newton force. And then if I solve that, I get 22.5 Newtons, or using significant digits, 23 Newtons. And since these both have the same positive charge, that's going to be a repulsive force. It's a vector between the two. Let's solve another one. Calculate the electric force between the proton and electron in hydrogen, which again has one proton and one electron. Let's say the average distance between the proton and the electron is going to be 5.3 times 10 to the negative 11th meters. So what you should do is pause the video right now and try to solve this one on your own, um, and then come back. But if you don't want to do that, let me show you how I'd set it up. So what I've got is the Coulomb constant again. That's going to remain constant. I'm going to calculate my charges. Now, since I've got a proton and an electron, what is their charge? It's not really given in the problem. Remember, that's going to be the elementary charge. And so we're going to have the elementary charge of the proton and uh, the electron, which is going to be a negative value. And then the distance is given in the problem like that. So I'm going to set it up like this. I've got my two charges at the top. Again, it's going to be the absolute value, so the negative's gone 
done away. Um, and then I've got my distance, I'm gonna square that on the bottom. Same way as I did it before, I'm, the units are gonna be canceled and now I've got this Newton on the top. And then I simplify it and I get 8.2 times 10 to the negative eighth Newtons. Since these both have opposite charges, then it's going to be an attractive force between the two. That's what's actually holding the electron in place. Let's say we move into extra charges. Let's say I've got a problem like this. So we've got three um, charges. They each have, we'll say, a charge of Q. And I want to figure out what's the charge on C from both B and A. So how would you solve a problem like that? It's pretty simple. If I know that there are two centimeters between each of these charges, I could just do two separate problems. I could calculate the, char the force of A on C, and then I simply add that to the force of B on C. Or you could even solve these things, instead of just getting a number, you could solve it qualitatively. Um, and so in other words, this is an actual AP physics problem. If I had another charge down here, what's going to be the force on B of all other charges? Well, you can see that A and C are going to cancel because they're going to be equal in size but opposite in direction. So I could just calculate it's going to be whatever the force from D is. And so since this looks like a square, I could figure out what the distance is going to be here. So that's going to be my R squared value. And so that's that's how you figure out electric charge. It's simply Coulomb's law. So did you learn to use Coulomb's law to make predictions about the interactions between objects um, or charges? Can you connect the concepts of electric force and gravitational force? And then finally, can you use mathematics to come up with, with a result? In other words, what is the electric force between two charges, three charges, four charges, or evenly distributed charges? Well, I hope that all makes sense and I hope that was helpful.